Bridge Cross. Yay! Okay, we are live. Ooh, that was a rough one. That was a rough one. Okay. So let me get things pulled up here and Hopefully, ah, there we go. I even see myself. Yahoo. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just getting ready for a couple things here. One second. If you were Brooklyn and you were going to put the pouncers somewhere, are they out yet? I haven't seen them. They right. were around the corner on the table near the dies. Once upon a time. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're live. <laughs> you always put these in. Jamie and I were trying to guess where they ended up. Huh? Yeah. They did end up somewhere. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello, 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 my friends. All right. Um, there is a clean wine glass back there, though. Because remember I brought that one back? You might have to just reach over to the dish drainer, though. Oh, yeah. What's the bottle of that? There's a port. You got a huge port today. <laughs> Woo! All right. So, uh... Happy Wine Friday. It seems like today is going to be uh, a day. Normally, we get a much smaller bottle of port, but today we're getting the supersized bottle of port, which we better not drink all today. Because um, if you haven't had port before, um, yeah, it's a 19.5%. So, like what? Like a two times wine kind of a thing? I don't know. What, what, what's the percentage of wine? Well, wine, wine. I mean, it's a ballpark percentage of wine. Still depends on the type of wine you're drinking. Hmm. Okay. I just okay. As you open it sideways, just don't spill on stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> so today, anybody know what the standard uh, percentage of wine is? Percentage how? Like that doesn't even make a sense. Question. Well, what we were just talking about, the alcohol percentage, percentage. per bottle. This depends on the salt. Here, the give, look at the look at the label. Oh, you could, they're, every they're, one of them is late. Yes, I know. We do, we already we did. About the proof. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of them is labeled percentage alcohol by volume. So but the proof. That's the proof. Yeah, it's the proof. Yeah, but I believe that proof when they label it as proof, it's double. But yes, it is. But, yeah. But so this is content. per volume. So that means for every ounce of port. For every ounce. 19.5% of that ounce is just alcohol. That's how strong it is. That's not strong. That's like 20%. For 19, that's 40 proof. Yeah, and that would be 40 proof, right. Oh, that's a joke. <sighs> okay, my friends. So it turns out. Drink that in my sippy bottle as a youngster. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, let's see who, um, oh, okay, Sue might be on the, may, might be on team director. She yeah. says 5.5 to 16%, so it's all over the place. Yeah. But Elizabeth gave me more of a ballpark. She says 11 to 12%, which is actually, you know, a ballpark right in the middle of what Sue just gave me. So everybody's consistent. I think that's great. There you go. Okay. So we've got um, Diane. Hello, hello. And hi, Glenda. What's your name? Susan. How many ounces is in this? That is, class? whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How many ounces is in this? Class? I don't know, but that, that's like, that's a lot if you were pouring a glass of wine. And yeah. it's an extra lot if you're pouring a glass of port. It's a lot that you want your customers to come back for. What? 
Yeah. If I was pouring wine, that's how I would pour my wine. Because I would like them to come back. <laughs> okay, you guys can't tell because I cannot tip it, but it's like this far from the top. That far. So, we are going to have a great, great day. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, Elizabeth. Howdy from Washington. And Miss Sue. Hello, hello. Happy Wine Friday. And, oh, Sandra's here. Wonderful. Welcome. Who else is here? Okay. Oh, and there's Veronica. You drink all that, you will be slurring your words. Yes, yes, yes. You will be slurring your words. He, he hopes that's the case, because then I will at least talk less. <laughs> I don't think you would ever talk less. <laughs> Not if I can help it. Uh, you know, so <laughs> when I was when I was a little girl, I at the playground. Um, I'm gonna drink it. I'll drink it. No, no, no. I'm just gonna drink it. I was gonna tell you. I know. I was gonna tell you a story though. So when I was a little girl, there was a playground at um, that my elementary school. It was first grade, right? Oh. And so I. Oh, yeah, I know. So it was like a, a wood structure thing, you know, that they fort or whatever. Oh. Did you just growl? <laughs> that sound was meant for inside my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyways, there was like one of those fire poles, you know, the kids used to have that you could slide down or whatever. But at the bottom of the t at the bottom of the pole was a tire for stability with a metal rim in it and cement. Okay, so I'm in the first grade, um, and I've, I've obviously done it lots of times. But I go to slide down the pole and uh, miss I, the pole apparently. I, I, I had a whole play lot. Yeah, needless <laughs> to say, this this pole didn't stick around long after this. But I fell headfirst into the tire with the metal rim. That's how I got this big scar on my forehead. Uh, what, what could go wrong? Uh, right? Yeah. So, but you know, uh, things were things were loosier, goosier then. Monkey bars are evil. That's how I got the seagull. Oh, that one. Yeah. Otherwise, my bottom lip would be really thin. Mm. <laughs> Almost like Botox, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I fell head first and then we had to wait for my mom to come get me from work. Mm -hmm. So I laid on the floor of the... Um, principal's office and there was for years after this there was a big blood stain from my head on the floor because they didn't change the carpet but the coolest thing when I was in the first grade is I could touch my skull but what I was really going to tell you is when I went in for surgery they didn't want to knock me out they just wanted to do it localized and of course I was in the first grade so I said no you have to knock me out I was freaked out but as soon as I started getting tired, I had so much to tell them. I'm like, no, wait, wait, I have something to tell you. It's really important. I don't remember what it was, but I remember like the, the anxiety of not being able to tell them what was really, really important because I was getting knocked out. Now that you tell me the story, it all, it all makes sense now. What does? I mean, you need cracking your egg, just a whole little... Just you as a person. It just makes sense. <laughs> Do you feel like you just got a better glimpse of me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you had like you had like massive head trauma. You well, know? I don't know about massive. Well, it was massive. You, oh. hit a, you hit a cement block. No, I hit a metal block. rim. Well, whatever. Metal, yeah. cement, they all the same results. Yeah, it right. split my head. Fourteen stitches. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. So that explains. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Yeah. That explains it. So mm -hmm. there we go. So now I'm a little more confident. And uh. And how to deal with you as a person? Will you be more tolerant? I don't know if I could be. I don't know. I don't. I don't think Mother Teresa could be more tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. We got some stuff to get to today. Are you ready? I'm talking to you. Oh, I guess. I don't know. Part? You're not really I helping. To go to the park. Did you just announce that? I did. That's my name. Right Remember that voice you were just talking about that was in your head? Yeah. Okay. So my friends, I wanted to tell you guys that I was able to get in one more shipment of these. These are now totally sold out at Picket Fence. I don't know when they're coming back in. I have two sets available of the paper pouncers. So, no, 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 no. no, I do have two sets. What? Where's your yes button? Where's your yes button? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take it away from you. Okay, so um, 
and these are the only ones I have in stock for a while, but these things have been getting like rave reviews. People are loving them. There is a set, the rainbow set's $39.99, the neutral set is $12.99, and right now we've got them available only as a bundle, but I did want to let you guys know that we only have two um, in case you were kind of waiting on those. Okay. Chip, chip! Hooray! Chippy, how you doing? All right, the, the now. Trapster. Oh, the Trapster, excuse me, hello, the Trapster. I have something else to show you guys. The instigator? She's about to kick something off. I'm sure. I'm certain of it. Oh, yeah. Know. She did yesterday. She tried. Did she really? Okay. Sue? Did you say hi to Sue? You say hi to I Sue. did say hi to Sue. Like a dense load. Remember, Sue started the conversation that said drinking all that will be slurring your words. And then I said you'd like that because I'd talk less. And you said you couldn't talk less if you tried. Oh, that's true. I think, I think Sue, I could go drinking with Sue. I think Sue can put a, put a case back. Sue might be a trooper. But you, that, you can't put a case back because you don't drink beer. I can't. I just give it to Sue. <laughs> you let her do the drinking for the both of you? It could be, too. <laughs> okay. Can we get on with it? <laughs> okay. So yesterday, I showed you guys those gorgeous embossing folders from Memory Box. Well, <laughs> Dave wrote me in the morning yesterday, and he goes, Oops, we forgot to put your paper pads in your order box. My thing is very crooked. Is anybody else disturbed by this? Well, you guys have a thing crooked. How much do you have in that thing? I don't know. I'm trying to make it Remember straight. There we go. Is that straight? That looks straighter. Okay. So, I have got to show you guys these amazingly gorgeous new papers. Now, I did order kind of deep, um, but... We had them out today, and we've already gone through, I'd say, at least half of them. So, um, see that that right there, that pulls. That's what that's what happened to the head crack. I knew it. I used to think you would pulls because he was like ADD, and you had like dogs running in your head, like a Buddhist sort of thing, where they say stop the dogs from chasing dogs to calm your mind. What? That's a Buddhist thing. They say stop chasing dogs in your mind. They want you to shut your mind off. So when I used to study Buddhism, I used to call stop chasing dogs or something like that. And so you have, and now it makes sense because you go, ah, uh, you sort of freeze like you in the matrix. Uh, I do because I've got about 18 thoughts in my head. So that may be because unsupervised childhood that sits you down careening into a metal <laughs> tire <laughs> might be the result of that, right? Not to mention that you just left bled all over the carpet in the office. In the principal's yeah, office, I yeah. Mean, you know. So, yeah. I, yeah. Hope, I mean, hey. But it was St. Mary's. Oh, it was a Catholic school. Yeah, it was. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, the teachers weren't nuns, but I think the principal was a nun. She? Mm hmm. Uh, was a sister. Sister Shirley. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So she was a nun, I'm guessing. I only know her as Sister Shirley, <laughs> so that would be my that would be my giveaway. Yeah, okay. So, anyways, on to the paper. So, six by six pad, twenty four sheets in here. This is called the Magnolia Plaid, and look at this. So they're all double sided. Okay, gorgeous. But the one side of each of these papers has a foil in it. Now they have had other plaids this is a new set of colors but you guys I mean wow right so there's some darker ones there's some greens there are some stunning purples oh my goodness and all of them have these gorgeous foils in them so the um, magnolia plaid is eight dollars and fifty cents you get 24 six by six sheets and each one of those 24 sheets is foiled on one side okay and then the other one is called Magnolia Grove. And this one has, I'm going to show you this side first, okay? Because it's got lots of beautiful little, I mean, look at how little those are. Those are so perfect for card making. The B sides, look at that. Gorgeous, right? Okay, now check out this side. So much foil. Whoa. I mean... And in purples, look at that. That is just beautiful. You got it in white, green, and you've got this one. Okay, I can speed up a little bit. I just get kind of mesmerized by the foil. 
This one looks like a topographic map, doesn't it, to you too? Yeah. A little bit? I like the waves. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so those, my friends, are the two um, paper pads. Magnolia Grove and Magnolia Plaid. And those ones are eight fifty. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Now, so from 49 and Market, you guys have been, um, so initially, before they started the color swatch lines, which is Eucalyptus, Blossom, Inkwell, Toast, and then the two that are coming up, which is Ocean and Lavender, okay? Um, and by the way, those pre-orders are not closed yet uh, because I just saw the date got pushed back, but um, I'll send out more information about that. But I kind of thought it might anyways. So, um, But initially, do you guys remember when we got in all those colors of film strips in the very beginning? They also came out with colors of tickets. Was there something else in that line? There might have been. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look. But in that release, I know there there was the all the film strips which we got in and then all the tickets. And so at the time, I didn't get the tickets. We just didn't really have anywhere to put it. But we're going to kind of reset things up for the um, 49 and Market section. So I have gotten in some of the other colors of the tickets. And I'm so excited to show you guys. So these are the same kind of tickets that you are familiar with that have been coming out with the color swatch uh, lines, but in some other colors. And more are coming. This is just the first six from these. So let's take a look at these. And each one of these is, um, I believe they're $12.99. And I'll just kind of quickly look so that you guys can see, but I'm telling you, they are fantastic. So this first one we're looking at, this is Fern. Look at how beautiful those ones are. Now, I'm not going to untape every one of them because we did look through these when we did, was it Inkwell, I think? Um, but this one is so fun because it's kind of a white base. And you've got all of those postage stamps with cancellation on there. And then this one, if you remember when we were looking through this, some of them, like this piece here, is perforated in this direction. So you'll actually get two different squares. And then this one is one long ticket going that way. This one has two tickets. So it's very cool because you actually get a lot of variety in a set like this. Okay. So that one is Fern. Now the rest of these I'm not going to... Um, I am not going to necessarily, you know, look all in detail unless you guys need me to. So this is the orange one. By orange, I mean citrus. Um, would you mind grabbing me these colors in the film strips over there? So we just can tie it all together. Fern, citrus, eggplant, plum, sunbeam, and lagoon. Okay. Okay. So that is citrus. Is there six of them? Did we not have fern? No fern and no plum? Oh, plum might be with plum grove. Thank you. Okay, so here is... Yeah, I just wanted to show them. Plum Grove is over on aisle one. Aisle one. Clean up on aisle one. <laughs> we don't have aisle numbers. Okay. So this one is Sunbeam. And actually, you guys, this one is fabulous for things like um, that will go with fossilized amber, that kind of a color, color scheme. Absolutely gorgeous. And then for those of you guys that got the film strips, you can kind of see how those colors now are starting to tie in. Awesome. Thank you. I said thanks. You got it. Yeah. Oh, you heading off? Okay. And then uh, it turns out I need to reorder fern. But um, this one is citrus. And then here's where your citrus film strips. So they're all kind of in that cool color family. And then let's do lagoon. This one is Lagoon. Oh, you guys, if you love teal, wow. This one I got to take out. 
Look at that beautiful teal color. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And this one is like, it is a dark, dark, beautiful teal. So um, you can see the writing on it, but it's definitely a darker accent, which is nice because then it works as a companion to that one. And then you've got um, kind of a different colored um, set of the stamps there. But then you can see that it goes really, really well. So even though you have different darkness values, all of them go well with those film strips that I know a lot of you guys already have. Okay. And then let's see, this one is eggplant. And for the purple lovers, are you guys ready for that? Wow. How gorgeous is that? So in the meantime, plum and eggplant are both kind of a purple, but they are kind of a um, a slightly different version of purple. So I'll just open them up so you can compare. So um, this one is a bit more of a pinky purple. This one's more of a purple purple. Um, shall, shall I say this one's more of a plum purple? Because, you know, <laughs> that's the name. And then there is that film strip and that one. So you can see how things are kind of tying together in, um, in that color scheme. So, okay, so these are just in. We actually haven't had these before. So they aren't brand, brand new to 49 and Market, but they are new in the store. And I wanted to make sure you guys saw those because all of these colors in the tickets and the film strips and stuff are are designed to go with various lines. So you may already have a line um, at home that the tickets go with or the film strips go with because they have sort of like a specific color palette. Okay. So those are the new things that I had to show you. And yesterday we talked about demoing this one. We talked about playing with the foam rolls and we talked about the masking paper. So I have a couple of very quick things that I wanted to do today um, while we have some time so that we can kind of clear up some of the questions. Okay. So with this one, this is the last one I have in stock actually. So we had to, <laughs> we had to hunt this one down because I set it off to the side so that we could use it, but then I forgot where I put it. I was so organized. Do you guys ever do that? You like organize yourself into <laughs> oblivion and you're like, had I just left it where I knew that it shouldn't go, I would know exactly where it goes. So, okay, first off, let's, um, let's just die cut this so we can kind of see what, what the pieces look like, okay? So I have an A2 size, I have an A2 size panel here, but you know what, um, and I'm going to just leave it because I think it's going to be okay, but if I were to actually, if I were going to be making something, you know what, no, I'm going to do a slightly bigger piece because um, I think it would be fine, but I'd have to make sure I kept it really, really lined up. So I'm going to do just a wee bigger piece. And then I'll know that it's the perfect size and that it didn't slip one way or another, okay? I didn't do much bigger, but um, just a little bit. Okay. According to who let me measure today? Oh my goodness. Never mind. I gotta cut again. Hold on a second, my friends. Unless it was this piece. Was it this piece? Nope. I totally flubbed that up. I'm gonna go uh, try this one more time. You can tell it's Friday. I. It must be that giant glass of port that I was given. We'll go with that. When in doubt, blame it on the director. Brooke can't measure today? It's got to be his fault, right? Okay. All righty.
Okay. So let's let's kind of take a look here at what we've got and brushes. Okay. I don't have any blue inks on the table, but um, it is the port's fault. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> I love I love your vote of confidence. And, you know, I've gotten, oh, well, he was drinking a little bit, but I've gotten this far down in my cup. Oh, yeah, you guys can tell from that picture, right? There's definitely some room to breathe in there now. Okay, so, um, so this one, it's a solid plate, so I'm going to need my paper piercer. For those of you guys that are new to die cutting, um, on the back of a die like this, there's going to be these little holes. Those holes are just so that you can poke your die cut pieces out. And you don't have to use all of them, but um, it's just because sometimes in a plate like this, you don't have room to get it uh, under your fingernail. Okay, so you just poke it and you can very carefully pull it out. Okay, so we have this, <laughs> this crazy pattern right here, and we're going to take a look at this. Now, we know that we've got a couple of different levels of what this is. So this one here should probably be a sand color. Now, mind you, I don't have, um, I don't know what colors are in here, so this could be a bit of a danger a danger play, but let's try. Let's just see. Oh, I have next to no color in there, so that'll be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to use my brown on this one. This is just so we can kind of get an idea of what these pieces look like put together. And this seems as sand-esque as possible. And so I'm using my Media Grip Matte, and I'm going to tell you guys, for trying to ink... Um, pieces like this, this is, you know, it's, this one's a bit bigger, so this is pretty good. Okay, so that's going to be our sand piece. Now, you can do it a whole lot more, you know, in various layers and stuff like that, but, okay, so next up, we've got this one. Now, what this one is, is, <laughs> hi, Charlotte. No, you're just fine. So this one is going to be that layer of calm water that comes in on the beach, okay? So I don't know what color this is, but maybe it's a gray. Is it a gray? Maybe, like a gray blue? Could be, right? So let's see. Probably don't even have any gray in here. The one time I don't have any colors in my brushes. I, like, don't clean these things, and... I don't have, okay, so I'm going to tell you guys the goods and the bads of the media grip, okay? This is why Tim talks about cutting it. This thing is a rock star at holding my dies down so they don't get damaged. However, it really is not good for my brush gliding over <laughs> the edges because it really causes a lot of resistance. So this would be the good time to use those paper pouncers. And um, we, may, we may try that out, at, but I, don't, I only have a black and a gray one, which would have been good for now. But I think we're gonna need some blue in here, don't you guys? So let me just... I have my paper pouncers in the car. Oh, it's okay. I'm, well, I have, a, I have a gray one, but... Okay. So now we are sitting kind of like that. Are you guys kind of starting to see? Oh, you know what? <laughs> this is going to be awesome when it comes together. All right. So next up, let's think about this piece. So this piece is out in the ocean. Um, maybe it's a little bit darker of a color. I don't know really what colors are in these brushes, but... We're going to just kind of put some color on because that's what I've got. OK, 
Okay. And maybe a little bit of this one mixed in just to kind of turquoise things up a little bit. I don't know. That looks pretty good. Okay, so hang on just one second. I want to grab something and see if I like it. I may or may not. I guess the question is, can I find it? <laughs> okay. Um, and so, okay. So I actually did go grab my hickory smoke and I am going to grab the one pouncer that I have. And the reason I'm going to grab um, this one is because the next piece, I do want to do it a little bit gray, um, but these really are not, it's not sliding super well on this paper so or on this mat. So I'm going to try, but here's the thing with the paper pouncer, okay? I want to do a very light coating on there. So this is a brand new one. So I'm going to just dab it on, then I'm going to have some other paper. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Yeah, actually that's going to be the perfect gray. Okay, let's give this a try because it isn't going to pick up a ton of color from the pad because um, it's brand new and I don't have that much in there. So this is actually going to be perfect. Yep. Oh, I love it. That was so much easier. All right. Not going to lie. So much easier. Okay. So I have two paper pouncers. I have a gray and a black one that they sent me to um, play with. So I don't have all the colors yet. Um, but I, yep, pretty much love those. Okay. That was really easy. Now, here's what I want to do next. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work, friends, but you know what? The fun part about crafting is that you don't actually really have to know. Sometimes you just play with it and try and see, and then if it works, it's awesome. If it doesn't, that's fine because it's just paper. So before I get to this next stage, I'm going to take this and we're going to just put it together so that you can see what it looks like at this stage because I think it's pretty cool. Okay. So, do you guys see how cool that is? Now that it has color, that is awesome. I am loving this. So, this actually could even use more color because I've done really, really light colors because I didn't pick up any ink, right? I just used whatever was in my brushes. But I love this. This is a really fantastic looking when you get the colors in, it looks really cool for um, a seashore. Now, I just want to try something. I don't know if this is a good idea or if I should have stopped there, but um, I am going to grab my fluffy stuff. And so this stuff typically makes uh, a showing around Christmas time because it puffs up like snow, but I think this could look really cool as the fray on this seashore. So um, this is why I didn't worry too much about putting too much gray on here. So I'm going to just take this and it's kind of like a, it's a pretty viscous um, medium. Okay. So, but I don't actually want it super thick. So what I'm going to do is take my palette knife. Again, I have no idea if this is really going to end up working in my favor, but I think it actually might be pretty cool. Okay. 
I need a, hang on a second, paper pierce to hold this down. And I need to get it at this end here. I have kind of a lot right here. So I am trying my best to, now I'm putting, oops, that wasn't, that was not part of the plan right there. Oh, I did it again. Oh, okay. It's like butter side down, just nonstop. Okay. Fudge balls. Uh, come on. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop before I really, really mess this up. And I don't know how permanent this stuff is when it dries, so I'm going to just take a moment here and clean off my palette knife, which already has um, some other ridiculous stuff on it. But um, let's see what we've got. So now the magic of fluffy stuff is when you heat it and it puffs up. So before I get to that, let me just kind of hold this up so you guys can see how thin of a layer I have on here, right? It is not thick at all um, because I don't really want it to be, oh, that's not even plugged in. Oh, um, I don't really want it to be super, super thick. Uh, like the thicker it is, the bigger the puffs. So let's see. Right. So this is what we have now. That to me looks just like what I had in mind. And if it didn't, uh, I would go with it anyways, because I actually really like it. So, um, but that's kind of what I was thinking. Now it, you can tell that I got a little bit more say on this side than that side, but that's okay. Cause, um, you know, the fray at the ocean is not, um, it's not that consistent. So let me wipe this down really quick. That's what I was looking for. So that I don't get ink all over the back of everything. And then I have, um, I have a, maybe I do. So we know this panel is an A2. So I'm going to just grab one of these A2s that I had already cut as a panel, and I'm going to end up gluing this on. Um, and I think this might be just the best way to do it. Now, you could probably do it with tape or something like that, but if I do it with glue, then it gives me a little bit of room to um, nudge things around, okay? So I'm going to use... Yeah, isn't that fluffy stuff awesome? Um and so I think it's really cool and it adds this level of texture when you use it. They actually have, they've come out recently with fluffy stuff in colors. Um, I'm just not 100% sure what we want to do with it yet. So that's why I haven't brought it in. But they've got it in pastel colors. So if it's something that you guys are interested in, I think there's like a pink and a blue. Um, there might be a tan, which I could see because that could be really cute on like... Um, little animals, um, like his fur or something like that. But, um, I'm not, I haven't quite figured out what to do with the colored fluffy stuff in pastels. So okay. So I'm going to start with this layer because this one is the biggest and seems like it will be the easiest. Now, before I go and stick this down too much, I'm going to try to get this bad boy in there because I don't want him to be totally permanent until I know how well it wraps around this guy. Okay. So 
Let's stick that in and it'll nudge perfectly right on this side and then we'll go to lay that down. Oh, this is looking phenomenal. And these pieces are, um, they're thin, so you may end up finding that you've got to do a little bit of bending because it doesn't have as much rigid rigidity when the paper is as thin as this one, okay? But that's fine. Uh, those are the two pieces that you want to kind of do at the same time. Everything else is going to line up pretty well on, on the line that we need, uh, I hope. I say that. I should probably make sure that that's actually the case, but um, I think so. And then before I go and like actually glue this down, I'm just going to make sure that it's going in the direction that I need it to go. And then um, I guess because it's kind of bent because of that fluffy stuff, I want to be very careful that as I put this down, I don't flatten the fluffy stuff, right? But I give it enough nudges that it kind of completes completes the scene, gets close. See what I'm kind of doing there? Because it's having, and part of what's what you're gonna run into by adding the fluffy stuff is we've added a medium that makes the paper a little bit wet and then we heat it. So it can change the paper just a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna make a, that big of a difference by um, once we have this all together. Oh, you guys, this is freaking awesome. Okay, so I just wanna add just a little bit more color to this guy. Cause this is the deep dark ocean, right? The deep dark ocean. So let's give it a little bit more color of whatever color is in here and whatever color is in this one. And the color of the ocean probably depends. You guys have seen all those reality shows where they always take the, you know, the people falling in love to the Caribbean or, you know, Bahamas or something and the water over there is freaking crazy blue. So you could make it that blue if you wanted to. Um, I haven't actually been to one of those places, but it looks good in the pictures. So there we go. Oh yeah, you can. Good thinking. Well, but yes, you can. Um, but these ones uh, with the fluffy stuff, it's got such a fine tip that they come, um, they have some pre-colored ones. So like if you color, like with the grit paste and the expand paste, you have to take that stuff out of a tub and put it on with a palette knife so it's easy to color. This one you apply with a tip. So it's not as easy to color because you'd have to take like a blob of it out and color it and then you wouldn't have the applicator. So um, while yes, you probably could color it yourself, you would then kind of not have that same delivery mechanism. Um, but for those other things, it wouldn't make much difference because you're gonna put it on the same way. Okay, oh. This is so cool. I'm gonna hold this up. Hang on just one second. Just get my parts and pieces all in there. Oh, this is so much cooler than I even like was imagining. Okay, look at that. Like that is really, really neat. And you guys, you can tell that that looks like it is supposed to be a beach scene, right? I hope. I think you can. I know, so cool. And that's this die here. So I have one of these dies in stock, um, but I'm gonna get some more ordered because I think that that uh, sample is pretty phenomenal. And so this die is like $19.99. Um, and I think it's, it's just brilliant. They also, if you are somebody who likes slim lines, 
um, making slimline cards. They also have it in slimline. So let me know if you are interested in that and I can um, stick that on the next order because I think it's pretty cool. And then the fluffy stuff, um, mine doesn't have a price on it, but it's, I feel like it's like $5 or less. So it's if you don't have the fluffy stuff in your um, stash, it's a really good thing to have. And I'm going to tell you guys, every time I open this, I find myself very surprised because I opened it a while ago and it still is working just fine. So however it's sealed, maybe that's also because I haven't used a ton of it, so there's not a lot of air in the bottle. But um, it seems to be lasting for a good long time, consistency-wise. So that is that guy. All right, next up, we are going to talk about, let me put my glue away. Hold on one second. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So next up, let's talk about the masking um, stuff from Sizzix, the masking film, okay? So this was the other one we had kind of a little bit of a question about because um, we weren't sure if it was clear, but I checked and it's clear, but we wanna see like how it's gonna die cut and stuff. Now on the sample, they have a really detailed die, but I grabbed this one because I wanted to, oops, Jamie, out of the um, bottom drawer, right there in the sack of drawers on your right, is a block. I just need one for like the whiskey bottle size. Call them up. Yeah, that's good. Uh, is it? Can you call them? Oh no, I think I could swing that. Thank you. So this is one of the new stamp sets from Visible Image, and we haven't made a sample of this yet. And um, I just found that they had a really, really cool um, YouTube demo video where they did a whole card with this, and it, it was it's really, really fun. I just watched a snippet of it. But um, so I have this one, and I want to play with it because I think it could be kind of fun to use as the demo for um, the masking film. Okay. So, all right. So first off, I am going to come at this. Um, there's there's a couple of different ways, and I might not necessarily do this in this order if I were um, if I were going to actually turn this into a finished sample, but for today, we're going to kind of work in this order, okay? So I'm going to use my VersaFine Claire, and for those of you guys uh, that have been here in the last couple days, if you were looking for the Nocturne, we just got it back in stock, and we got a couple dozen. This is hands down the best black ink pad for stamping. I absolutely love it. So it's a pigment ink pad, but it's also a quick drying pigment ink pad. It's waterproof, so you can watercolor over it whether you emboss with it or not, okay? So, but for today, I'm not going to do much of anything other than I just wanted a nice, clean, stamped image. And I probably could have used my press. That might have been a great idea, but I didn't. So, here's hoping. Oh, beautiful. That's what I love about this ink. Beautiful almost every single time. And if it isn't, it's usually a uh, user error. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this one off. And then put this guy back. And then I'm going to stamp this one. Okay, right next to it. So this is the glass. 
Now, the glass has a lot of open space in the middle. So, um, when you're using a stamp pad with something like this and you don't want ink in the middle, it's nice to have a bigger stamp pad because if you use the whole thing across it, the sides of the stamp will keep it out of the middle. Um, if you have a smaller ink pad, you just have to be extra careful, which is fine. That's doable too. Okay, so we're going to go here. Give it just a second for that to transfer. Oh, loving it. Okay. Now I'm going to clean this one off. And now I need you guys to get ready to type in, okay? Because now we need to vote. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a splash of whiskey and this is the splash I'm just going to kind of show you it goes just like so I believe <laughs> I believe where's my picture it doesn't yeah okay so it goes just kind of like that is how I understand it now I have a couple colors of verse fine and I don't have this in a stamp press, so I really don't have the option to um, stamp this twice because I'm, you know, I mean, I'm not that good. So we're going to pick what color looks best. These, these ones I tested before the video looks most like whiskey. I don't drink whiskey. So um, this one is cheerful. That seems really dang bright. This one is golden meadow. This one is summertime. This one, ooh, that is that one is acorn. And is acorn about the color maybe? We need something a little bit redder. What are we brown? Okay. So maybe acorn. Versifying Claire, I love um, I love them as a stamp pad. I just really, really, really want them to have more colors. Okay, this one. Ooh. What if we were making a glass of port? Maybe that. It's not exactly the color, but it's a heck of a lot closer. Hi, Brenda. Okay, so I'm just looking to see if there's another brown. They have a couple browns, but it might be acorn that we go with. Um, or fallen leaves. Where's pine cone? Can you do me a favor and look if pine cone is on the stack above the, um, yep. right below the uh, thingamajig? Yeah. Ooh. So definitely not fallen leaves. That's. There's, yeah. Do I have pine cone? Okay, yeah, all right, my friends. I don't know, I don't really know. What about stamping it in distress? Well, I wanted it to be waterproof. Okay. So, okay, so acorn, so lighter than acorn. So let's try something. I got, I got a couple, I got a couple things here. Sometimes it's just fun to play and see what. Mm, that will be, all, that's more of an ivory. What about delicata bronze? Um, that might not be. Okay, never mind. It's, yeah, I, it's okay. We're going to just, um, okay, so I do have an idea, though. What if we do this? What if we ink this guy up, okay, and then we stamp it, okay? Actually, uh, and then what if we stamp it again? What do you think about that? Or is that still too brown? It feels like we need it a little bit more golden. Look, yeah. That gold in delicata. Mm, I kind of. Or what I'm doing. 
I got one more thing to try. And then we're calling it good. Okay. Because this is really not even the point of what I, <laughs> of what I was doing. I just get sidetracked because, you know, that's how, that's how things roll. Um, okay. So I have... <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. Okay. Are you guys, uh, what did we decide on these colors? What if I did a palette like that and maybe just a little bit more. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work guys, but we're going to try it because now I'm kind of curious. Okay. And what if I now pick up some of that yellow? I don't have any white to stamp this on. Oop. Ah, well, actually, that's pretty good versus the other colors. I think we are, I think that's actually a really, really, huh, well, color me surprised. I think that worked pretty darn well. Okay, so let me see if I can just pick up a little bit more. Since I've kind of made myself a squishy palette here. And let's just see what we get now. Okay, you guys. Check that out. All right. Well, I think we just learned something totally new. Um, do you guys like that color? I think that's a pretty good color. Given that we had very little to work with, I'm happy with that. So before I go and muck this whole thing up, because it's not even part of what um, <laughs> what I wanted to do today, uh, I just get sometimes sidetracked. I know you guys do it too, right? You like... You're getting a whole bunch of agreement. Everybody likes whatever they should give last. Okay. It's this very cool, like, mixing palette thing on the stamp, because you can't mix these, you can't mix these inks together right? Because you'll contaminate a pad. This one might end up being too yellow now, uh, but we're going to just go for it because the beauty is I can't tell until I stamp it, but I know there's still some brown in there. So we're going to just see what we can do. All right. So it is shaped like the glass. It's clear. So here's hoping Brooke doesn't Muck this up. Okay. Whew. Ready, guys? Oh! Freaking awesome! Nice. Okay. That so looks like the color we wanted and also the color of baby diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. I hope you guys are as excited as I am because I've not ever done that before. And um, that kind of opens up. For those of you guys that have the Versafine Claire, you guys, I know you love them. They are fantastic. And... The biggest complaint I get is not enough colors. And we really had that problem today. Uh, but I think we nailed it. And I think this is a technique that um, we may we may try again. Now. I have also seen online people do use daubers to put two colors onto one stamp. Yes, but this actually, what this did, when I was mixing the stamp on the pad, uh -huh. it actually mixed the colors yeah, together they, they, versus the dauber. The dauber, they kind of, yeah. it's hard to explain, but they kind of 
mixed it on the stamp with yeah. the dauber. But then your dauber is that color. Yeah. And you can't go back to the ink pad to get right. more. So, um, but this was a pretty good, pretty good. Okay. So, did I clean my stamp though? I have no idea. You guys, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it when we figure out some solution to a problem we didn't even know we needed to figure out. That is the best day. Okay, so um, this is VersaFine Claire, which means if I were to dump embossing powder on, um, it very well might stick. So next up, what I want to do is we're gonna do um, we're gonna do some masking, okay, uh, with this new masking paper. But I don't know how it's gonna work over the VersaFine Claire, so I'm gonna just spend a second and heat set this. And I think part of the reason, you guys, that this worked is because these VersaFine Claire's are a pigment ink pad. And so you saw when I put um, Golden Meadow on my mat here, you saw how much ink went down. And so, like, with my distress inks and stuff, and also it didn't really um, ball up like some sometimes inks will do when you know something is added to them or whatever so it this could very well be a technique that works with other um other inks as well but it definitely kicks butt as a technique for versifying player i am so excited when i look at that whiskey that's freaking awesome okay i think that's probably dry i think Okay, let me put this away before I lose it. All right, next up, we are going to grab the dies for, um, I'm gonna grab it for the whiskey bottle and the glass. So the dies that you can get to go with this stamp set are, you know what, Jamie, would you do me a favor and grab, um, grab the actual ones? Because I don't know what their prices are just for when we get to the recap of what the stamps are. Because, I mean, we've shown them before, but people may may want them now that we've seen how awesome the, they stamp. So I'm going to grab the cup. Do you know if they're on the front table? They are on the front table, yeah. And then I'm going to grab the bottle. Now, from the stamp set, this one is the die for the wood. This one is the die for, I guess, the lemon lemon wedge and this is the die for the ice cube we aren't using those right now so i am going to put them back in my baggie you can just uh, awesome thank you look at this color jamie did you see it up close it's i mean it's awesome. freaking awesome right so excited i feel like that's is, is hashtag crafting wins a thing? Because I feel like that is the case. All right. So now, let's try this guy. It should be, and we are going to start it today. Because I feel like we did just win. Okay. So this is the new masking film from Sizzix. And this uh, is a clear film that creates a mask, and I'm guessing is die cuttable because otherwise what good would it be, right? And the fabulous, fabulous price on this, we do have some still in stock, the fabulous price on this is you get 10 sheets, they're like an A4, so um, not quite an eight and a half by 11, it's the European size of that, and um, for $9.99, so it's like a dollar a sheet. It is really, really a fabulous price. But I had some scissors on this table. Yes, I still have them. Okay, so just for the sake of space here, I am going to cut out what I need just out of it, a rough cut. I should probably turn it over, although the, it is a symmetrical die, so I guess it doesn't really matter. And I do this one. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm going to run the two of these through my die cut machine and we're going to see what we get, which hopefully is a mask if all goes according to plan. Okay. This would probably be a great time to use that magnetic plate, but that'll, that'll hold it there. Okay, let me just run this through. Ah, the sound of the machine working. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. Okay, good news, friends. <laughs> we have two masks. Yay! All is good. All right. Crafting wins. Oh, see? Elizabeth's all on board. You can save the negative space if you want a pencil. Oh, you could. I should have made a bigger one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, um, that's actually a good idea too, Jamie. She suggested saving the negative space if you wanted to um, stencil some color on. And uh, that is a good idea. If you wanted to do that, if you want to use both the positives and the negatives, which now I'm wishing that we had done that, um, I would cut bigger pieces so you have more space around them because now I just have to kind of mask it um, with other, other stuff. And I have a feeling, although I'm not 100% sure, but I have a feeling that this is supposed to be reusable because it's clear. But I guess we will see here in a minute. Okay. All right. So now this is cut with the die. So it's going to give you, oh, hold on, my friend. So it's going to give you that little bit of border around it, which is what you would typically get with the die. So if you wanted it to be exactly the image, you would stamp on this paper with like an archival ink or um, something like that. Now, here's what I'm noticing, okay? So see, I got it kind of off the first time, and now I have some black under there. I am really hoping that when I pull this off, that black doesn't transfer to the white. But what that tells me is that I probably should have dried my VersaFine Claire a little bit longer. But, um, so if I were crafting, like, more, you know, just not live, then I would dry it maybe a little bit longer before moving to the next stage. Okay, so I got us a simple stencil to work with because I thought this would be kind of fun to have like a big ray of sunshine coming out of that bottle. Now, um, I am going to use whatever colors on my, I don't know why I'm so, this, you know, this whatever color is in your brushes kind of a thing really just cleans out your brushes. Now, here's the thing, my friend. This stencil is definitely one that we should put pixie spray on and in fact I'm gonna do that so okay so for those of you guys that are kind of new to stenciling let's sort of talk about this when you go to put the stencil down um, different stencils are different levels of sturdiness, right? This one is, while it's, everything is connected, these lines, when you go to use them, can wiggle around, and then you won't get as distinct of lines. So in comes the Pixie Spray, and this is a light tack repositionable adhesive for stencils. So I'm going to spray it on one side of the stencil, and then um, that side, I'll let it dry for a minute or two, then it will be tacky like a post-it note. And that'll be the side that goes down to the paper and it will hold it in place so that as I'm stenciling those lines, 
they're less likely to move and I will get great um, bowl or great uh, clean lines on the edges, okay? Because if they move while I'm stenciling, then um, I get more softer lines or what can also actually look like it's not supposed to look. Are you stenciling in distress? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> just to throw a wrench in things, yeah. if you have the pouncers, which Jamie has the rainbow pouncers in the car, so we are going to get to play with it. Um, if you have the pouncers, you may not necessarily need to do the pixie spray. For that one, you might. <laughs> For this one, you might. But I'm going to do it anyways, just so you guys can see. Now, you want to do this into a box. It's like a spray adhesive. And for one of the only times in history, I don't actually have a liner in my garbage can, which is so weird. It's probably because I took the garbage out. So I'm going to just, I have a box here, and I'm going to just spray it into this box and hope it doesn't make a big mess. Okay? So. Okay. Give me one second here. I tend to err on the side of very lightness on my pixie spray because if you have too much pixie spray, it can stick to your image and it can actually rip it. And I don't really want it to do that. I mean, ideally, because, you know, we worked so hard to get like this perfect whiskey color. So now the thing is, is that I was going to use the brushes and the brushes are way better than using foam with a stencil like this because they pull and tug a lot less. However, the pouncers that Jamie has just brought me um, pull and tug at a level of zero because they go straight up and down for color application. So we're going to go, I have a fossilized amber on the table, but I think, what color do you guys think we should go with? Maybe mustard seed? Should we do yellow or should we do a different color altogether? What do you guys think? What color is the bottle going to be? Uh, white. Because I wasn't going to finish it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It really, this is for demo purposes. I would say something pale. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe like a, maybe I'll try it in, um, I'm going to go grab. So now check this out, you guys. So because of that pixie spray, I did it on this side of the stencil. It's not strong, but it is sticking to the paper. But I also want to get a move on because I don't want to leave it on there for very long. So I'm going to grab squeezed lemonade or scattered straw might be a good one. Maybe scattered straw. Squeezed lemonade is kind of bright. Yeah. Well, scattered straw is on the table as an option, assuming... Okay, scattered straw it is. Okay. The dried marigold and sweet lemonade. All right, well, we're going to go with scattered straw. Now, Jamie, have you used the yellow one? What? I have to use it for the first time? Yep, you do. Oh. You'll just have to prime it a little. It's, it's okay. Fine. It's okay. Just I know, I hate to, like, you know... You're going to go up and down. You're not going to rub. It'll be oh, I'm not worried about ruining it. It's just, you know, that initial color adding of somebody else's right out the box kind of thing. It'll be fine. It'll make it easier for me to use. <laughs> that is true. And you do have 12 of them. So, okay. So because there's no color in it yet, I am just kind of getting a little bit of color in there already so that we have something kind of to work with and that um, the sponge itself has a little bit more of a smooth color. Okay, so now I'm just going to very lightly, what I'm going to do is start, as I grab the color, I'm going to start in the middle near the bottle and just kind of make my way out so that the darker color is here near the bottle and then it kind of fades out as I go, okay?
What? I am, I am watching without sound. Uh huh. And so I'm hearing you're tap, tapping live, and it's not <laughs> matching up. It's tapping on the screen oh, because of the delay. Yeah, it's like when um when you watch a video and the soundtrack gets off, and uh -huh. you're just like, oh my god, it's so distracting. Now, one thing that's very interesting to note is that I need the darkest of the color around this circle. And for some reason, when I put this on, initially, the circle was going to be behind the bottle. But when I put it on this time, the circle is not behind the bottle. So, you know, and then I started pouncing, and I'm just realizing this now. So I have to kind of work with that uh, little caveat that I sort of gave myself. Okay. Now... I'm going to just hold this up real quick so you guys can get kind of a close look. It's looking pretty cool. So the pouncer, what we learned in um, the, what we learned when we played with them the first time is that it can get into some pretty good detail. Now, the thing is, is that I'm actually not pushing really hard because I'm trying to get this variation. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm getting color like in some of these little tiny window spots. So the other thing I could do then is I could take my brush here and just add a little bit of color for those ones that I think might not be getting the color that I think they're getting. Although, you know, the thing is with these kind of things, if I were to take this off, <laughs> I might actually be very surprised. Okay, but it just kind of has to do with how much color I'm trying to apply and I'm trying to fade it. So, you guys, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? I think this is going to be so awesome. Let me put Jamie's pouncer away so that I don't... Um... You could also do second generation pouncing. Pounce off on the scrap piece first and then... Yeah, you know there wasn't much on it though because it was brand new. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. Look at that. So, very, very cool. And one of the coolest things, okay, you guys, because I'm just learning to use the pouncers too. One of the coolest things is that my stencil stayed fabulous and awesome. And that variegation from pouncing from the middle out, wow. It is like, it is smooth. Can you guys see that? Even I'm surprised. Okay, now... We have this clear um, mask on here, so let's take this off. Diane Nathan says, very awesome. Very awesome. Okay. And hold on, hold on. You may want to go very slow on these masks for the first time because I see that it just pulled just a wee smidge of my paper. Um, but I think that kind of had to do with I also pushed the mask down quite a bit. So just pulling it off slowly. Oh, that is so cool, you guys. Okay, and this is still sticky. So hands down, I'm putting this with my stamp set because I can absolutely use it again. And if you fully dry your uh, VersaFine Claire, just so you guys can see, uh, you won't have that. So uh, do a better job drying than I did. O-M-G. That is awesome. Okay. I'm in love. Wow, what a successful, successful day. Okay, now the last thing that I promised you guys that we were going to talk about. I am like so crazy about this. This turned out so good. It did. Wow. You're going to have to finish that card. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I might have to. But I didn't put it on watercolor paper, which, you know, means I might have a bit more of an issue if I were to try and watercolor it. So, um, okay, so then the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about... Um, what time is, oh my God, is it 522? Yes. Shoot. Okay. I'm not doing a demo of this, but let me tell you, this is the big foam roll from yesterday. Here's what I learned when I did a little bit more research. It does die cut. Okay. So, um, it is not probably going to work excellent 
for super, super detailed dyes, like mini expressions and things like that. But it is going to work phenomenal for um, open spaced dies that have a relatively simple cutting edge. It is going to work great because a lot of times when you have die cuttable foam, it's very thin. So it's like foam, but kind of not like foam because you don't get great results. This is hands down what I would consider thick enough that if you wanted to do a shaker card, you could absolutely do this. Now, if I did and die cut this shape and I wanted to do a second layer, I could just die cut a second layer of the foam and make it even thicker. But um, if you're not putting thick things in your shaker, this is going to be um, a thickness that you can absolutely work with. So I was pretty happy with um, with that test. Now... Uh, what it said is use a metal shim. So I used my precision plate for my big shot. If you don't have one of those, chat with me. Uh, we can get you hooked up. Um, but you may need to shim it just so it has a little bit more pressure because this is the thickest die cuttable foam I have ever seen. Now, if you aren't as interested in die cutting it, this foam is a great value because it was so easy to put on paper. And it cut like a breeze with these scissors. It didn't stick to the scissors. These are Tim's, you know, non-stick scissors, whatever. Um, so I absolutely love it. Now, this roll of foam, we talked about it yesterday, and I was going to demo it for you today, but, you know, things, we get distracted by wi picking whiskey colors, I guess. But 50 feet, okay, it is 3 inches and... 15 16 wide. So this one is our A2. And just so you can see, so putting it on the back of an A2 card, this is going to be phenomenal. For those of you guys that like to do wet backgrounds and use that as your card base, and then it gets all warpy and you try to smooth it out, you have to sometimes put the foam on, right, and have it stick to something else for it to smooth out. This is going to be an entire sheet of foam, and it's going to be great for keeping those things flat and it's going to be great for keeping whole backgrounds like that from caving in but it's almost four inches wide and it is 50 feet so even as a panel for an a2 card if that was all you were going to use it for you're going to get like a hundred cards out of there probably a few more because you don't need a full six inches and so um let me know i'm putting in another order we're out of the ones that we had in stock but um i'm putting in another order that they'll probably ship out Monday would be my guess. Um, and so we've got it on special pricing for only $39. But let me know if you want a white or a black because I want to make sure that we get enough ordered because I am so excited about the possibilities of this for shaker cards and various things. Plus just the ease of having that much foam is awesome. Okay, so I'm going to do a really quick... Um, recap for you guys because I did not realize that I had waffled on for so long, but that's why it's Friday. And so, uh, let's see, what did I cover first? Okay. I don't know what I covered first, but the new memory box papers. Okay. We have Magnolia plaid and that is this gorgeous beauty. And we have Magnolia Grove. Both of them have foil. Both of them are in this stunning color palette. You get 24 sheets each. They're double-sided papers and foil accents on on one side, side A, of all the papers. $8.50 for each one. Magnolia Plaid, Magnolia Grove. And then we got in, oh, I have two, I only have two bundles of the pouncers, okay? And right now I've only got them as, as bundles. We'll have them available where you can get either the rainbow or the neutrals later. But right now, they're totally sold out. Um, and so we have the rainbow color of bundle of pouncers and then this one. This is $39.99 and $12.99. And they're only available as um, a set. Okay. And then we got in some new colors of $49 and market ticket. They're not, well, they're not new, but we haven't carried them before. And so if you want to add to your collection of awesome tickets that go with 49 and Market or basically anything that you're doing, 
We've got uh, Lagoon, Fern, Sunbeam, Citrus, Plum, and Eggplant. And they are $12.99 a piece. And then um, for those of you guys that got them before, they go with these film strips. But we do have a lot of the film strip colors in stock as well, and they coordinate perfectly. The surprise of the day was this one. So this is $19.99. I have one in stock, but I'm, they'll be coming in the same um, order as the foam rolls. Uh, so if you want this one, I mean, how easy was this to put together a really dynamic background? $19.99 on the um, beach scene die. And then the fluffy stuff, if you don't have this, this is like one of those things that you got to have. You don't use it all the time, but when you need it, it is phenomenal to have it. Um, I don't know exactly, but it's under $5. I mean, a great, great investment on that. Okay. And then we played with the, <coughs> the whiskey. Now, I do have these in stock. This is from the newest release from Visible Image. And this whiskey is like, wow. If you like to make, um, you know, masculine cards with kind of a bit of a flair. I mean, look at that, you guys. Freaking awesome. And it wasn't hard at all, right? So uh, the stamps are $14.99 and the dies are, are you ready? $12.50 for the set. I mean, the dies are $12.50, you guys. That's crazy. And then... Um, we have so much good stuff today. I can't even believe it. This masking film, I'm going to say that if you like to ink and stencil and stuff, this is going to be a new must-have in your craft set, in your, like, uh, crafting stash. Because it actually was really nice to be able to put that mask on and see what was under it. Because you can then adjust your colors and things like that as you needed to because you can see what your stamped images are. And this die cut, really, really easy. Because it's from Sizzix, of course they're going to make something that die cuts because, you know, they make die cuts, right? They make dies. So 10 sheets, and they are 8 and a quarter by 11 and 3 quarters, and it's only $9.99. Poof. I mean, really good price. Okay, this stencil is from Visible Image. I don't think we have it in, but if anybody really wants this one, please let me know because I can get it on our next order. Uh, was there anything else? Oh, and we just got restocked on a lot of the Versifying Claire's. So the colors that we ended up using for the whiskey, which was um, a bit of a surprise, uh, was the Golden Meadow and the Acorn in that very cool mixing technique that I am so in love with now. Um, but we have all the colors back in stock, I believe. And Nocturne, which is also on your list of crafting must-haves if you stamp. Okay. Did I cover it all? I feel like I might have. Oh, yeah. No, the pouncers. We talked about those. Did I get it all? I think so. My voice speeds up because I knew it was... I don't know how I managed to waffle on for five and a half hours. But I'm so glad you guys stuck with me. Oh, and then don't forget about the foam rolls. So, and definitely tell me if you want white or black, because um, this this stuff is very cool. I am really, really excited to have that. Do you want to show them the balloon samples real quick? Let's do it next week. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, you guys, have a fabulous, fabulous weekend, and we will talk to you all soon. Bye.